Well, good day to you all, dear ones, and welcome to this 19th day of October, day 293 in our journey through the scriptures. Hello to everyone out there. My name's Hunter. I am your brother and your Bible reading coach, somebody who shows up with you every day to spend a little time together in the pages of the Bible. And we are going to let the Bible do what it does and point the way to the one who is the living word of God the one alone who has the words of life. And so we come to him because he came to us. He tells us that he came that he might give us life and life abundant. So today, sisters and brothers from all around the world are gathering here to warm their hearts by the fires of God's love. That is who he is. And today we are in the book of Job. That's where we'll start, chapter 5. Then we go on to Psalm 108, and we'll finish in Acts, chapters 10 and 11. We're reading from the New Living Translation. I'm glad you're here. Job, chapter 5. Eliphaz's response continues. Cry for help, but will anyone answer you? Which of the angels will help you? Surely resentment destroys the fool, and jealousy kills the simple. I have seen that fools may be successful for a moment, but then comes sudden disaster. Their children are abandoned far from help. They are crushed in court with no one to defend them. The hungry devour their harvests, even when it is guarded by brambles. The thirsty pant after their wealth, but evil does not spring from the soil and trouble does not sprout from the earth. People are born for trouble. As readily as sparks fly up from a fire, if I were you, I would go to God and present my case to him. He does great things too marvelous to understand. He performs countless miracles. He gives rain for the earth and water for the fields. He gives prosperity to the poor and protects those who suffer. He frustrates the plans of schemers so that the work of their hands will not succeed. He traps the wise in their own cleverness, so their cunning schemes are thwarted. They find it is dark in the daytime, and they grope at noon as if it were night. He rescues the poor from the cutting words of the strong, and rescues them from the clutches of the powerful. And so at last the poor have hope, and the snapping jaws of the wicked are shut. But consider the joy of those Corrected by God. Do not despise the discipline of the Almighty when you sin, for though he wounds, he also bandages. He strikes, but his hands also heal. From six disasters he will rescue you. Even in the seventh, he will keep you from evil. He will save you from death in the time of famine, from the power of the sword in the time of war. You will be safe from slander and have no fear when destruction comes. You will laugh at destruction and famine. Wild animals will not terrify you. You will be at peace with the stones of the field, and its wild animals will be at peace with you. You will know that your home is safe. When you survey your possessions, nothing will be missing. You will have many children. Your descendants will be as plentiful as grass. You will go to the grave at a ripe old age, like a sheaf of grain harvested at the proper time. We have studied life and found all this to be true. Listen to my counsel and apply it to yourself. Psalm 108 A Song, A Psalm of David My heart is confident in you, O God. No wonder I can sing your praises with all my heart. Wake up, lyre and harp. I will wake up the dawn with my song. I will thank you, Lord, among all the people. I will sing your praises among the nations, for your unfailing love is higher than the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the highest heavens. May your glory shine over all the earth. Now rescue your beloved people. Answer and save us by your power. God has promised this by his holiness. I will divide up Shechem with joy. I will measure out the valley of Sakuth. Gilead is mine, and Manasseh too. Ephraim, my helmet, will produce my warriors, and Judah, my scepter, will produce my kings. But Moab, my washbasin, will become my servant, 
and I will wipe my feet on Edom and shout in triumph over Philistia. Who will bring me into the fortified city? Who will bring me victory over Edom? Have you rejected us, O God? Will you no longer march with our armies? O please help us against our enemies. For all human help is useless. With God's help, we will do mighty things. For he will trample down our foes. Acts chapter 10 In Caesarea there lived a Roman army officer named Cornelius, who was a captain of the Italian regiment. He was a devout, God-fearing man, as was everyone in his household. He gave generously to the poor and prayed regularly to God. One afternoon about three o'clock he had a vision in which he saw an angel of God coming toward him. Cornelius, the angel said. Cornelius stared at him in terror. What is it, sir? he asked the angel. And the angel replied, Your prayers and gifts to the poor have been received by God as an offering. Now send some men to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. He is staying with Simon, a tanner who lives near the seashore. As soon as the angel was gone, Cornelius called two of his household servants and a devout soldier, one of his personal attendants. He told them what had happened and sent them off to Joppa. The next day, as Cornelius's messengers were nearing the town, Peter went up on the flat roof to pray. It was about noon, and he was hungry. But while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw the sky open, and something like a large sheet was let down by its four corners. In the sheet were all sorts of animals, reptiles, and birds. Then a voice said to him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat them. No, Lord, Peter declared, I have never eaten anything that our Jewish laws have declared impure and unclean. But the voice spoke again. Do not call something unclean if God has made it clean. The same vision was repeated three times. Then the sheet was suddenly pulled up to heaven. Peter was very perplexed. What could the vision mean? Just then, the men sent to Cornelius found Simon's house. Standing outside the gate, they asked if a man named Simon Peter was staying there. Meanwhile, as Peter was puzzling over the vision, the Holy Spirit said to him, Three men have come looking for you. Get up, go downstairs, and go with them without hesitation. Don't worry, for I have sent them. So Peter went down and said, I am the man you are looking for. Why have you come? They said, We were sent by Cornelius, a Roman officer, he is a devout and God-fearing man, well-respected by all the Jews. A holy angel instructed him to summon you to his house so that he can hear your message. So Peter invited the men to stay for the night. The next day the men went with them, accompanied by some of the brothers from Joppa. They arrived in Caesarea the following day. Cornelius was waiting for them and had called together his relatives and close friends. As Peter entered the home, Cornelius fell at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter pulled him up and said, Stand up. I'm a human being just like you. So they talked together and went inside, where many others were assembled. Peter told them, You know it is against our law for a Jewish man to enter a Gentile home like this, or to associate with you. But God has shown me that I should no longer think of anyone as impure or unclean. So I came without objection as soon as I was sent for you. Now tell me why you sent for me. Cornelius replied, Four days ago I was praying in my house about this same time, three o'clock in the afternoon. Suddenly, a man in dazzling clothes was standing in front of me. He told me, Cornelius, your prayers have been heard and your gifts to the poor have been noticed by God. Now send messengers to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. He is staying in the home of Simon, a tanner who lives near the seashore. So I sent for you at once, and it was good of you to come. Now we are all here waiting before God to hear the message the Lord has given you. Then Peter replied, I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. In every nation he accepts those who fear him and do what is right. This is the message of good news for the people of Israel, that there is peace with God through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after John began preaching his message of baptism, 
And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we apostles are witnesses of all he did throughout Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him to life on the third day. Then God allowed him to appear, not to the general public, but to us, whom God had chosen in advance to be his witnesses. We were those who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he ordered us to preach everywhere and to testify that Jesus is the one appointed by God to be the judge of all, the living and the dead. He is the one all the prophets testified about, saying that everyone who believes in him will have their sins forgiven through his name. Even as Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the message. The Jewish believers who came with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles too. For they heard them speaking in other tongues and praising God. Then Peter asked, Can anyone object to their being baptized, now that they have received the Holy Spirit just as we did? So he gave orders for them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Afterward, Cornelius asked them to stay with them for several days. Acts chapter 11 Soon the news reached the apostles and other believers in Judea that the Gentiles had received the word of God. But when Peter arrived back in Jerusalem, The Jewish believers criticized him. You entered the home of a Gentile and even ate with them, they said. Then Peter told them exactly what had happened. I was in the town of Joppa, he said. And while I was praying, I went into a trance and saw a vision. Something like a large sheet was let down by its four corners from the sky, and it came right down to me. When I looked inside the sheet, I saw all sorts of tame and wild animals, reptiles and birds, and I heard a voice say, Get up, Peter, kill and eat them. No, Lord, I replied, I have never eaten anything that our Jewish laws have declared impure or unclean. But the voice from heaven spoke again. Do not call something unclean if God has made it clean. This happened three times before the sheet and all it contained was pulled back up to heaven. Just then three men who had been sent from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were staying. The Holy Spirit told me to go with them and not to worry that they were Gentiles. These six brothers here accompanied me, and we soon entered the home of the man who had sent for us. He told us how an angel had appeared to him in his home, and had told him, send messengers to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. He will tell you how you and everyone in your household can be saved. As I began to speak, Peter continued, the Holy Spirit fell on them, just as he fell on us at the beginning. Then I thought of the Lord's words when he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And since God gave these Gentiles the same gift he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus, who was I to stand in God's way? When the others heard this, they stopped objecting and began praising God. They said, We can see that God also has given the Gentiles the privilege of repenting of their sins and receiving eternal life. Meanwhile, the believers who had been scattered during the persecution after Stephen's death traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch of Syria. They preached the word of God, but only to Jews. However, some of the believers, who went to Antioch from Cyprus and Cyrene, began preaching to the Gentiles about the Lord Jesus. The power of the Lord was with them, and a large number of these Gentiles believed and turned to the Lord. When the church at Jerusalem heard what had happened, they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw this evidence of God's blessing, he was filled with joy and he encouraged the believers to stay true to the Lord. Barnabas was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and strong in faith, and many people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went on to Tarsus to look for Saul. When he found him, He brought him back to Antioch. Both of them stayed there with the church for a full year, teaching large crowds of people. It was at Antioch that the believers were first called Christians. During this time, some prophets traveled from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them, named Agabus, stood up in one of the meetings and predicted by the Spirit 
that a great famine was coming upon the entire Roman world. This was fulfilled during the reign of Claudius, so the believers in Antioch decided to send relief to the brothers and sisters in Judea, everyone giving as much as they could. This they did, entrusting their gifts to Barnabas and Saul to take to the elders of the church in Jerusalem. And now may our Lord give his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. How do you see yourself? Are you clean? Do you know it? Or are you just hoping for it? Hoping that maybe you've done enough good to make up for the stuff that you regret? Are you hoping that you can be like Cornelius and find favor with God? Maybe by your piety, your good works? Well, let's be clear. It was God who made him clean. And now this message of peace with God has come to him, just as he is. And that salvation comes through Jesus. And this life is for all and without favoritism, Jew or Gentile alike. Pious God-fear or rebellious rabble, the obviously lost, God makes them clean. God alone is the one who does it. God has done that work not just for the insider, those who come from a particular family or race or class or religion. God has included all of humanity in this work. God has done that in you because of his great love and mercy for you and for all. Peter hears a voice from heaven, do you? Or do you just hear the same old condemning voices, self-loathing voices, voices that make you cower in your spirit? Peter hears a voice from heaven, do you? Or are you hearing those same old religious voices that see those outside of us as dirty and rejected by God? We must hear God's voice today and stop despising, stop the self-loathing, stop calling unclean what God has made clean. For many of us, we must reject the religious voices that keep us separate and afraid of others. Instead, we must obey the voice of God and take steps forward towards those that we don't understand, toward those that we consider our enemies. Today, you're clean, and it's not what you've done. It's all Him. So rest in the completion of it. It's a gift to be received and lived in. That's the prayer that I have for my own soul. That's the prayer that I have for my family, for my wife and my daughters and my son. And that's the prayer that I have for you. May it be so. And now, let us pray. Lord God Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we might not fall into sin or be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear Lord, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far and those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your Spirit on all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light, and where there is sadness, joy. O Lord, grant that I might not seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in the giving that we receive, in the pardoning that we are pardoned, 
It is in the dying that we are born unto eternal life. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your grateful children, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and all you have made. We bless you for your creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. And above all, for your immeasurable love and your redemption of the world through our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. Lord, we pray, give us such awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but with our lives, by the giving up of ourselves for your service in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory through all ages. Amen. And now as our Lord has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Well, I've had a couple of walks today with the hound dog, that is Finn, the wonder dog. I'm so grateful for that little guy. He gets me up and moving. He gets me outside, takes me for walks. <laughs> he's, he's great. Yes, indeed, I am grateful for that little guy. I'm sure many of you have pets that you are grateful for, too. And whether you have a pet to take you for a walk or not, let me encourage you, my friend, to get outside if you can and breathe deep to enjoy the day, to realize that you are clean, you're free, you're, you're free to go about your day without looking over your shoulder as if God's going to come and get you. No, the news is so much better than that. So take it in, head outside, breathe deep, look up, say thank you, and step out into the day with the sure confidence that you are loved by God. You keep working on that and practicing that attitude because work is what it's going to take. It's going to take some rehabilitation of the way that we often see ourselves, see the world, see God. But Jesus can change all that if we let him. So let's let him. Well, hey, before I let you all go, I want to remind you again that we have... A new batch of You Are Loved mugs made by yours truly himself. That's right, folks. Right out of the kiln, we have them, and they are ready for you. They're selling like hotcakes, too. So if you were thinking about it, now's the time to take that action and head on over to hunterpottery.com and get your order in. A lot of folks are buying these for gifts for the upcoming holidays or just for themselves. You know, sitting back in the morning, listening to the DRB as you do, drinking a cup of coffee in your mug. From my hands and studio right to your house, with the reminder each day emblazoned on that mug that you are loved. And while you're at HunterPottery.com, you're going to see some of Heather's creations. They are these really amazing little clay houses that are full of charm, full of awesomeness, and they invite you into a whole other little world. So check out her little houses from our house to yours. All of that good stuff is there at hunterpottery.com. So check it out. We sure appreciate it, this little project of ours. <laughs> it serves a lot of purposes, one of which is it's just a hobby that we both enjoy taking part in, getting to make something with our hands, something to share with the world. 
But on a very practical note, we have daughters who live in far-flung places in this world, this beautiful world. And every now and then we like to see them. And so for this upcoming Thanksgiving, we've got our oldest daughter coming in from Scotland and our youngest daughter coming in from New York. And this is one way that we can help to offset the costs of bringing the kids home. So if you're a parent out there, I'm sure you you get that. Well, hey, before I let y'all go today, I just want to send a shout out to some of our partners out there. These are the folks that make this podcast possible. Without them, it just, well, it just doesn't happen. But because of them, we can show up with you each day and share some of God's goodness. So I want to say a big thank you to Amanda Lundberg, Christopher Hoops, J.B. McMeans, John Vanderwater, Suzanne Cairns, Calhoun Queener, Jenny Bauer, Tamika Peoples, Gregory Conley, and Anastasia McClochick. Blessings, my sisters, my brothers, my co-laborers here in this work of the Lord. And if you're listening today and you'd like to join that group of folks that make this dream possible, man, that is so amazing and it is so necessary. And all you need to do is head on over to the webpage, dailyradiobible.com, click on the donate link, you'll be on your way. Well, I'm going to be on my way now. But what do you say we all show up again here tomorrow and we will do this again? That's my plan. Until that time, let's go forward in God's joy. Let's let his joy be our strength. And let us always remember this that you are loved. No doubt about it. Alrighty? I'll talk to you again tomorrow. You guys take care.